Hey, welcome back to Mike's Trains. Um, glad you could join me. Uh, so, we're back in the, in the train yard with our roundhouse situation here. Now, I've decided to, to change things up a little bit and I asked in the last video if anybody wanted to see how I build the roundhouse with the uh, new Ford, the extended roundhouse machine shop building all into one building and some people said they wanted to see it. So I'm going to start a new series and, and it's going to be called uh, Roundhouse Machine Shop Kit Bash because the uh, the train yard is, is coming into quite a few parts here and I want to kind of trim that down a little bit so I'm going to run this as a separate video series. So let's go ahead and start that. And the first thing we need to do, as I talked about before, is we need to get the floor that's going to join the two together. Um, so what I did is I have this floor here is in the spot where it needs to be. You can see here, let me tip this back where it goes. This goes in here like this. So now the spacing is right. This is 1 and 15 16 So we're right there, right up to the edge. And then we throw it over here on the machine shop and that's another 1 and 15 16 So then all I needed to do at this point is just to line this with the with the uh, turntable bridge so that we got a good line and then if you remember from the last video I had the template in here we have the no track area that comes right through the center of this so that we don't have issues with that. So that leaves us this space to cover up. So what I have is some 60,000 styrene I bought a sheet at, at the uh, hobby store near me, and uh, it was, I want to say 12 by 16 sheet of 60 thousandths, which is pretty close to this thickness. It's a little thinner than this, but not by much. And that's this right here, and I've already cut it because I, I, I what I did was I taped these into place with some painter's tape, and then I, I um, cut some wood strips to go across this end and this end and I drew it out and then I took the whole thing with the wood strips and I put it on top of the styrene in the same configuration. I have marks here, I have tick marks right here and right here, right here to the edge and they go from here to the edge and then they line up right to the edge here. And I took this whole thing and set it on the sheet of styrene and I traced out this center part and this is what I came up with. So I've got this here, and this is gonna come in just like this. So this comes back. So this will come in just like this. And it's gonna line up like that. So now that's our new floor space. Okay, so now all I need to do is I'm gonna bring this upstairs and I'm gonna join this to this into this but this needs to be raised up to the floor level see it's a there's a little difference in, in height so what I'll probably end up doing is running a, a double strip down this here and then putting a, a, a seam across both pieces and gluing that down and the same across this here these seams right here won't be seen looking into the building you won't be able to see that it's all covered up we have a wall across the back a wall across the front and the only opening in there is right here and right here and I can blend that in so whatever you see on the inside really isn't going to matter but what I do need to do is I need to um, I need the length of track that goes into these slots into these grooves here because I need to install the track onto here and it needs to come out just past the end here so in order to do that I need a uh, I need a ruler okay so with the ruler what I need to measure is the length from the very back end the last the, the end of the uh, track slot all the way out I'm gonna cut these just a little bit longer than what I need so that's gonna be I'm going to go 13 inches, okay, because I'm not building this in place. I've seen other people do this and they build it in place and they, they actually glue the floor in 
and then they lay the tracks in, they cut them to length here, they run their feeders, they do everything they need to do, and then they build up from here. But in my situation here, I, I really don't want to do that. I don't think it's going to work out well for me because um, I'm not able to pull this area out and put it on my workbench where all my tools are. Um, I can't get the things like I'd like to. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to attach the tracks. 13 inches will come probably about a half an inch to three quarters further than what I need. Um, so I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the machine shop as well. And let's just make sure that 13, see I can even go 12 inches on that one. Now the tracks go right through the end and I believe when you build the machine shop there's a big door here so the trains can go right through it. Um, I don't think I'm going to make the tracks come out. I'm just going to come to the back edge here and that's going to be the end. And we'll leave the garage door. I don't think I want the tracks coming out. There's not enough room to put a locomotive out here. So I don't see the need to put the tracks out there. So all of that being said, so now I need 13, 13 inches. So I need six here and one here. I need seven 13 inch pieces of track. So what I have are pieces of flex track like this. And all I'm gonna do is cut these in half, all right? And at this point I can take this whole, all these pieces here and all my flex track and bring them upstairs, which is what we'll do. And then I'm gonna cut the, the pieces of track in half and we'll, uh, we'll set these rails into the floor of this in this piece. Um, actually, all right, I'm getting ahead of myself. What I want to do is attach these pieces together. I'll make this all one piece. And then once that's all one piece, I need to paint this floor and this floor to match this floor. Now this floor I painted with a rattle can, just spray paint. Uh, I have a couple different colors. I did um, I have a gray color and then I have like a uh, concrete color that I sprayed out on there. I sprayed the whole thing to white and then I mist it over with gray. And then I have chalks that I ground up in various shades of grays and blacks and different colors. And I just mashed all that in there and I took a little bit of red, give it some rust look. And that's all I did with that. And, and I think it looks pretty good, but I need to make these two floors match that. So why don't we start with that. Let's bring it upstairs and we'll start getting these floors put together. Alright, so we were up here in, in, my, in my bench and we want to start attaching these pieces together. So on this one, I'm going to make this floor go flush with the top. So to do that, we're going to flip this over and we're going to turn this this way like this. And I'm just going to bring it out to the front edge and then I'm going to put some weld on this just right here. So a little Contrary to what I said downstairs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything flush on the floor side on the top and then fill from the bottom so that you don't see any of that on the inside. going to put pressure on this and just hold it and make sure it stays together and give it a few seconds and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. Now I have a, a scrap piece of styrene. Because this is raised here, it's too high, See, I, I, I'm going to end up putting this underneath and that comes almost perfectly flush. So what I'll end up doing is I'm going to cut a strip of this and I'll run the full length from here. So you can see there are notches here. This is part of the building. Um, when you do add-ons to the roundhouse, I'll probably run it from this first one right here 
all the way down to about a quarter inch in from the from the front edge because I don't want that to interfere with anything. And then I'll put another one across the front like this so that it matches the thickness around here. Okay? And that's how we'll do that. But before we get into that right there, I want to flip this over. We're going to put this underneath so it dries flat like that. And then I'm going to run another bead down the edge here. Okay, so we'll let that sit and dry and we'll come back when this sets and then we'll put on the machine shop side and get that attached. So let's let this dry and we'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so now this piece is pretty good. It's, it's, it's pretty dried. So now I'm going to add pieces here, across here, and across here to match this thickness. So I've already cut a couple of strips. This one I have a 45 angle on. And I'm just going to bring this right up to the edge like this. And that's going to get our thickness here. And it'll also strengthen the joint between this and this because the thickness of this will now be glued to, to this floor here. So let's get that one glued in. And then we'll, uh, we'll move on to the front piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a bead of this right down the front here. just set this right on top of that like this and then I'm gonna weld right down the seam here you want to hit all sides of this so now that's welded into there and then we're going to take this next piece right here, and I've already cut a small angle on this. We're going to match this up to there, and then we're just going to cut this off flat at the edge here, like that. Now to cut this stuff, in case you're wondering, I'm just using one of these choppers. These things are great if you've never used one. That. And then we'll take our piece, just like we did the other one. I'm going to run a bunch of this right down the center here. Now we have the thickness in the front to match the rest of this. Now I'll probably do a, a little bit of a sand. You can see it's hanging over a little bit on the edge here, but a little bit of filing and that'll be just fine. Now for the back edge, across here, and then that's all we're going to need. So I'm going to cut another strip. Now the thickness of that, I believe I did a quarter of an inch. It's like three eighths. So it doesn't have to be exact by any means. So I'm just going to take this. As you can see the length is good. So we're just going to take this. I'm going to measure in from the edge. I'm going to go right here. And then I'm going to run my straight edge and then cut that. I need to be up here. So now I'm going to take this piece and run it across the back. So now you can see this isn't meeting over here, so now I'm just going to cut an angle into that.
So now we're all matched on this back side, this, this center section to the roundhouse. This is all done. Just want to make sure this is all squeezed down tight. This one the same way. And then we'll let that sit. And then um, when this is dry, we'll come back and we'll work on attaching this to this end. Actually, the more I think about it, I don't know. Let's see what the thickness is compared to. Yeah, it's, it's the same as this. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to run a piece down this end as well. Yeah. So we'll cut one more strip and we'll put it down this side and then when this is dry we'll be able to attach that right to it and it'll, everything will match up just fine. Okay, so I've taken this down and I've glued everything together. This is done now. The only thing I need to do, all right, all right um, let's, <laughs> let's be honest. What happened when I glued this first thing together, this might look a little different. Um, when I put this piece in, this, this big white base here, I had it backwards. I, I put it in wrong. And when I went down to check it on the layout, this was at the wrong angle to the turntable. So I had to pull it all back apart and rather than cutting a whole new one, I just flipped it over. And now my edges meet back here. Everything's right up here. But the uh, edge I put all the way around here as a base underneath, now is on top. So I, I had another scrap piece of this styrene and I just filled in the whole center. So now when you're looking at the bottom side, it's full as well as the top side. Um, and then I'm just going to go through with some filler and I'm going to fill these, these seams a little bit, give it a quick sand, and then I'll tape off this side here and I'm going to spray this side to match this and I'll weather that the same. And then this floor will be all done. I can't do any more with it now because it needs to sit and dry. I'm going to let this sit for probably 24 hours at least before I do anything else with it just because it's still a little fragile um, I want this to harden up really good before I do anything else with it and sanding and all that kind of stuff but it's it's the start of the whole kit bash and getting these buildings to look like one big building um, so anyway that's that's the beginning of it and I think that's also the end of this part of this project so again like always if you haven't visited my website it's mikestrains.wordpress.com give it a look see what you see if you like it you can uh, subscribe there for and you'll get email updates anytime I upload to there there are times there are sometimes that I put things there that don't make it to video um, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel please do Mike's Trains um, so anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Happy modeling.